Good afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining today's uh, special event when we have uh, alumni of HKST joining to present and share their experience about their entrepreneurship development. And here today we have uh, colleagues from uh, uh, DAO, Jerry, and also our SBM, Celia. And uh, they are here uh, to co-organize this event uh, with our uh, entrepreneurship center. My name is Tony. I'm a acting head of a um, acting director of the entrepreneurship center. Today, we are happy to have uh, invited several uh, alumni, our guests. Uh, next to me is uh, Professor uh, Keith, uh, Keith Young. <laughs> I, always, I, always, I, I always call him Keith when he was uh, a student at our university before, but now he's our uh, professor uh, in ISD. And he will be sharing with us and also leading the discussion later. And uh, we also have Mark and also Hans. They are our alumni developing their uh, uh, startup uh, entrepreneurship development uh, in, in the, in the uh, society. And uh, today, uh, because of the, of the time limitation for one hour, we will try to maximize the usage of the time. First of all, let me use about uh, several minutes to introduce uh, uh, what we are having at HKST for entrepreneurship development. And I will share a, a few slides in my PowerPoint. Please allow me to share this screen. Um, again, welcome all. Okay, this is one. Okay, welcome everyone. Um, um, our center is the action arm of university in, in uh, cultivating entrepreneurship development and uh, especially for the spirit. And also we try to create a very vibrant uh, entrepreneurial environment and ecosystem with a different type of resource. And also we are able to connect uh, uh, our uh, entrepreneurs and also uh, start people with uh, different resources, uh, uh, clear water bay as well as outside of uh, the university. And uh, let me skip a little bit of our slide here. Um, especially for this one, I would like to introduce with you. And um, this is a kind of a, a innovation and entrepreneurship platform with a different journey and different events and uh, resources available for uh, not only students, but also alumni and also our faculty members. As you can see from here, we will have a different type of uh, educational events, seminar, workshop, training programs, uh, competition, uh, the most famous one is our $1 million competition as well as the head UST. And we also provide a mentorship uh, program called the Mentor Hub. Actually, a lot of our alumni who are forming their uh, staff team are also our uh, participants of our Mentor Hub. And some of you uh, as alumni also help us to serve as uh, the mentor in this uh, Mentor Hub to provide uh, variable uh, uh, subscription and advice and connection for our staff people. So please welcome to join the Mentor if you are very interested in this and supporting other students and faculty members and staff development. We also have facilities, the base, and also the incubator uh, space at the SBM and uh, uh, available at Clearwater Bay here. And recently we have launched a test program, which is a, a program to, to connect faculty members that uh, uh, research outcome, technology outcome, together with our students at uh, entrepreneurship development. And um, we also have uh, some event held outside of Hong Kong, including China, overseas. And as you can see from here, we have a lot of uh, active patents available. And if you are interested in uh, using any of the patents, please also are welcome to come to us. Um, hopefully you can also help university to commercialize our technology. So, uh, I will try to use uh, several minutes to share with you our uh, a, a very short video. It's about five minutes.
sorry. Is there any technical issue with uh with the visual image for low sun? Okay, let me double check. Oh, oh I think it's a microphone. Yeah. Anyway. Is it okay now? Okay. Business operation and also for the society. Gangkuda 而且可以把它产业化Okay, I still can hear you. Huh? Can you? Okay, thank you. So, uh, without uh, further ado, uh, let me invite uh, Professor Yuan to start with the conversation and exchange with everyone. Professor Yuan, please stop. <clears throat> okay, let me try to unmute myself. Okay, yeah, welcome everyone. Yeah, good afternoon. 
So uh, yeah, today I'm very excited to have uh, our alumni Hanks and Mark to talk about their entrepreneurship experience. So uh, actually, they're very nice. They have uh, prepared something to share with all of you. So uh, perhaps let's Hanks, you may uh, introduce yourself and some of your yeah cool stuff. Your... I think you can just share your screen. We have. All right, can you guys see my screen? Yeah, good. Yeah. Okay. All right. Uh, so I'll, I'll just use about uh, five to ten minutes to to have a quick background of the company. All right. Yeah, so uh, yeah, I myself, uh, just a little bit background on my, about myself. Uh, I'm a Hong Kong national, uh, born and grew up in Hong Kong. Um, and I moved to the US uh, when I was about 17. Uh, uh, so went to school in UC Berkeley. Um, so over there I studied statistics and computer science, right? So my background is uh, yeah, it's more in the engineering or, or on, the, on the technical background. Uh, so after I graduated, um, uh, I, uh, my first job was actually in the uh, uh, bio, bioinformatic research. Uh, so at that time, it was like pretty hard field. Um, uh, the idea is really to use like computer science plus statistics to sort of like sort out how to uh, analyze a different genome, right? Um, and uh, at that time, I realized, you know, like that to to kind of like to progress in, the field, in that field, I need to. Uh, uh, you know, go further in a in a PhD, and then I, I realized that you know what I, I I was more interested to get into more like business related uh, uh, field in in uh, in the software. That's why I got into software consulting. Uh, from there, I was there for about another five years. So about 2011, I made a pretty big life change. Um, you know, uh, I mean, in the U.S., I mean, I had a you know very comfortable lifestyle, right? I mean. Uh, pretty big size house, nice car. <laughs> um, uh, but at that time, like I, I mean, I kind of thought about, you know, moving forward, like, what do I want to do? Do I want to stay in the US or in Asia? And then I make a really big, I would say risky uh, decision in my life at the time to move back to Hong Kong. Um, and and uh, when I moved back to Hong Kong, I realized the first, the, realized the first thing I need to do is really to build a network, right? So I decided to join uh, HKUST. Uh, in the MBA program. So I was a full-time MBA. Uh, so during my MBA, I mean, uh, I was, uh, you know, going to different job fairs and then also connected with like different people from different backgrounds. Uh, a lot of the MBA students at that time, you know, most of them were in finance, you know, or, or they wanted to get into like management consulting. Uh, so I went to a few, uh, you know, job fair and then at that time, and then I realized, you know, kind of like, I, I realized like my passion was not was not there, right? And then that's when like my ex colleague in the US uh, who came back a year before me and then he he said, hey, you know what? I got this idea, you know, in uh, doing a, a test startup in food ordering, you know, and then would I be interested in doing that? So I, I was like, yeah, why not? You know, why, why not just, uh, I mean, since I was an MBA, I mean, I should just explore different things, you know? So I gave myself, I gave myself a year where like I just went in and I gave myself a deadline that if a year it, just, it didn't go well, then I'll go back to the job market, right? So so that that really like how I got started, uh, yeah, during during the MBA. Um, so yeah, I mean uh, our company right now, I, I have on my next slide about more about my company. Uh, so uh, I, but I think one one very interesting point is that. Uh, Unlike other startup, uh, we didn't go the, the VC route. We were actually bootstrap, meaning that we didn't take investor money, right? So uh, uh, over the till now, right now we are, I would not say we are uh, successful, but I mean, at least we are more stable right now, right? So for now we are surfacing over uh, 16 1600 outlets uh, in like different regions, right? So uh, headquarters in Hong Kong. And then in the past two years, we've been actively expanding to overseas. Uh, so Singapore and Malaysia is like 
our next uh, largest regions. Uh, so we also uh, see that uh, the other Southeast Asia countries like Philippines and Thailand, uh, they will be also be very, very uh, uh, quickly growing and emerging, right? So that, that's where we will be putting a lot of effort in. Uh, so company right now, we have about 60 staff uh, across the regions, uh, and then our platform uh, is transacting at over uh, 400 million US dollars per year. So uh, at this at this point, you might ask like, what do I do? You might actually have used our solutions uh, in HKUST. Uh, so to give you a little bit of background, uh, why we started this in FMB? Because in the end, just like in any startup, the most important is you have to understand what's the macro trend, right? So we saw that um, when I first started that, that's when like, you know, iPhone just came out. So we kind of knew that like in the future, everything is going to a mobile, that's number one. Number two is uh, people will start using uh, what we call the uh, uh, mobile wallet, right? So, uh, so, so uh, as our prediction was right, that's why right now you see a lot of the investment going in uh, into FMB are mostly in delivery or mobile payments, right? Uh, so underneath like most of this unicorn, usually even Google, they have something to do with FMB and, and uh, also in, uh, uh, in mobile payments. So yeah, I mean, those are, these are the two trends we're betting on. We're betting on the delivery uh, and also like uh, mobile payment trends, right? Uh, and this slide, I actually made it two years ago before even COVID hit. But now as COVID happened, this become even more relevant, right? Uh, so in a very high level, we uh, provide different solutions, what we call the guest ordering solutions, all the way from kiosks uh, to like what we call the QR ordering. Uh, for students coming from Mingnan, you guys will be very familiar with this because this is very mature already in China, right? Um, and we also uh, uh, connect with different platforms, B2C platform, uh, like Deliveroo, Bookpanda, you know, those are platforms. Uh, so I'm not gonna go too deep into it, uh, so this slide, even like, to be honest, like even my parents, I mean, they knew I, they were in this journey, like uh, they still don't understand what I do. So it's easier, I show you, give you a video to illustrate what we do. Yeah, so uh, from the guest experience, basically, yeah, they can scan a QR code and then place all the directly on their phone. Uh, if, they, if they want, they want to, they can sign as a member. And then after that, uh, if there's point, they can uh, earn points and uh, directly to all the food and then the the order will be directly uh, sent over to the kitchen, right? Uh, you might also have used our solutions uh, at LG7, uh, which is like the, the kiosk solutions. Yeah, so in the end, what we're building is uh, allowing the, the, the customer to uh, place order instead of on the cashier, but now it's through like one of these channels, right? Uh, as they order from this channel, we also collect information about them that allow us, for example, to do personalizations, right? Uh, let's say for a, uh, a diner, now we can sort of analyze what they uh, like to eat and then to promote certain items to them, okay? Uh, so this is like a very high level uh, of what I do. Uh, and then I'll pass it over to Mark. Thanks, Hans, and very wonderful presentation. So uh, I'd like to uh, share my screen uh, to talk about my company. Before that, I want to introduce myself. I was an um, uh, undergraduate in HKUST in uh, electronics and electrical department. And I have got my MPhil in electronics and computer engineering uh, in year 2008. And after that, I was an uh, MBA in uh, CHK and I start uh, different companies. Uh, actually, uh, for my journeys of my um, entrepreneurship, I would start my uh, first uh, company uh, during my undergraduate, so nobody knows it. I'm trying to make some you know, home appliance and some smart uh, living system, like uh, a, a, a smart home systems. I'm selling those devices to Europe at that moment. 
And after that, I uh, start my company and I uh, serve the companies were uh, done. Some, were, some of them were sold, like um, my design house for uh, electronics and postcon infrastructure designs, and some um, a production house and some solar panels and solar projects um, companies that are start uh, in, in the science park uh, during my uh, 2015, maybe something like that. So after that, I uh, start my new company, we call that, uh, I believe that that will be uh, a company of my lifetime. Uh, that's the current company I established, uh, we call it Bourbon. So um, I'm not going to go through a very um, long presentation, but I'm trying to let you know what I'm trying uh, what we are doing right now. So I'm trying to share my screen. Um, uh, so everyone is okay on my screen? It's cool. Okay, so so actually Reborn is something like robot reborn. We're trying to at the very beginning, we're trying to work on some robotic solutions, but after that we we, we believe that the uh, the, the, the future the new normal is not only on robotics. We need some combination of different, what, what we call the elements to put into uh, the, the ecology, like the integration. So we try to um, um, integrate um, 5G, IoT, crowd, and AI into robotics to make the perfect solutions in order to kill the pains of uh, uh, different ecology. So we call ourselves not a mobile builder. We call ourselves a tech developer. We try to base in Hong Kong, which out to the world. So we would say, is that a grammatical mistake? You should based in Hong Kong, but no, we're trying to base in Hong Kong forever and try to reach out to the world. So that's it. Hey Mark, you mute yourself. Yeah. Is that okay right now? Okay, good. So uh, the current companies uh, were born is that which in year 2007. So uh, at that moment, I, uh, you know, I, I, I built the first uh, motion control robot we call the ME1 or even the, uh, the, uh, the earliest prototype we call ME0. So at that moment, because um, in Hong Kong or even in China, we don't have such uh, motion control domino robot. So uh, we try to make the first generation using uh, Bluetooth and um, Wi-Fi and 4G communications. So after that, um, in year 2018, so this is a uh, huge, you know, um, you know, the milestones uh, achievement of our company. So I worked closely with um, the, the tele operators in China Mobile and the equipment uh, developer uh, SETI to build the ever first 5G motion control human robot in China. So that is a very uh, successful and huge milestone that uh, we have obtained because uh, before that, uh, in, even though China is uh, focused on uh, the 5G development, they do not have uh, such uh, fancy and nice human robot to, to show the, 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 you know, the power of the 5G networks because we have a different advantage. Uh, for 5G over 4G, so we need to build something in order to make some tests for the uh, new 5G networks. So at this, at the moment, uh, we we got the Hong Kong Award for Industry in Equipment and Machinery Design. So this is not a startup uh, competition. This is um, uh, you know, the, the the open competition, which uh, every body and every you know, listed company could. Um, to, to participate and we're, on, we're lucky that we got a grand award of the Hong Kong AI in equipment and machine learning design in year 2018. So after that, in year 2019, we have uh, our ICT startup grand award. Um, so we also got a uh, you know, very nice ceremony from uh, Carol Lam. And um, also we have the uh, FKAI uh, awards in technological achievement. And after that, we have we joined a very nice ME robot road tour, you know, to demonstrate the 5G that we have trying to uh, try to work on. 
So this is some sort of our experience where not only China, we, we go up even every cities in, in China we have already been to. We have been to uh, something like um, uh, uh, Macau, we have been to uh, Thailand, which uh, we're we trying to meet uh, the, the Prime Minister of uh, Thailand, and we have gone to Indonesia, uh, India, um, uh, Singapore, um, Vietnam, and also in Europe, we, we have been to um, uh, Spain, we have been to Bulgaria, in Africa, we have been to um, um, uh, Nigeria, uh, South Africa, and even Wakanda, we have met uh, the, the, the highest senior official that we could meet in order to you know, promote 5G in China and Hong Kong technology to the world. So uh, after that, in the year 2020, so there's a uh, very short uh, demonstration that of uh, motion control robots. We first launched it uh, at the um, MWC Spain in order to promote our technology. So at the very beginning, we mainly focused on crisis management um, uh, applications, but after that, during the 2020, that's a very important thing so that how our technologies can, you know, fight or the whatever or, or participate in uh, epidemic prevention. So uh, we try to do lots of robots and to, in order to, you know, to, to do the ecology, the correct solutions to kill pain points. For epidemic prevention, we have um, maybe the first so famous, the PP3000 temperature measuring robots and the UV light disinfection robot, which had already, already been deployed to um, the government department, some private sector, public sectors, and maybe shopping malls, schools, so and so forth, from medical centers, something like that. So we tried to build the outdoor disinfection robot, which is the PSTS function COVID-19 uh, program that we'll be deploying to the MSD uh, next month. And for the property management solutions, we have an indoor environmental robots, which could you know, um, measure to, to make the quality assurance of um, uh, the indoor air quality and also the luminance or even um, noise, whatever uh, data that they would like to you know, get it. And we have, uh, during the new normal, we know that everybody is working on uh, as a KOL or even meet like this. We, we need to uh, tell the conferencing. So we have built a uh, 5G video conferencing robots and something like remote diagnosis robots. And uh, for example, the robot in operation, we could do process remotely uh, in the in a community ward or even in crisis management and dangerous task uh, location. So they would make uh, to 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 prevent uh, people from hurt or, or get you know uh, in, infected. Okay. So also we have uh, no touch. We we cooperate with uh, HKPC, which is a uh, contactless blood button control. So it is a very famous. So some of them may be using this kind of solution in, for example, the government department. Some uh, HKPC. Some uh, private. Uh, household um, environment, some public uh, estate, so and so forth. And also we have uh, some robotic archivate, which is for our, our smart working solutions is that there's so uh, I think um, we would like to share and we are welcome for the coming uh, discussion section. So that's it. And I'm trying to uh, stop my um, share. Okay. <clears throat> oh, very cool. Uh yeah, maybe let me quickly share uh, something related to my uh, research and company. Actually, I want to make it now. Uh, quick, can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah, I want to make it quick because yeah, I'm really interested in mass and hands stuff. So yeah, I have some questions already. Uh, yeah. So uh, this is my company, Sky Optimum Technology. It's founded in 2015. Yeah, actually. Uh, yeah, okay. What I want to show about uh, uh, the reason of uh, finding this company is really related to my research uh, in uh, 2011 uh, with uh, 
our, our former president, Tony, uh, Professor Tony Chan, and uh, some other collaborators in UCLA. So we um, develop an algorithm to do an automatic optimization of our furniture arrangements. Basically, it's a, like a space uh, uh, arrangement uh, uh, like problem. Then, uh, so yeah, why we have, actually why I have this idea is because really when I uh, visit uh, UCLA during, uh, during my postdoc, uh, I found uh, renovating my own home so yeah, tedious. So I would say, oh, uh, the computer should be more smart, right? So do the uh, automatic arrangement. And that's why we have this project. So after that, I moved to Singapore uh, to begin my faculty job there. And also I found a company which tried to uh, realize this research idea. So we make use of this idea to uh, do some uh, project. Uh, one uh, project to be highlighted is uh, we make use of this together with uh, VR, I think in 2016, at that time, I think VR is still quite new at that time. So we uh, use this to renovate the prime minister office for the uh, Singapore government. And uh, this is, uh, yeah, so after that, they really uh, renovate the real office following the virtual plan. And yeah, so we, we push this platform, it's like an interior design platform using a web, 3D web and VR, AR visualization. And because we work on this kind of a VR, uh, AR uh, visualization technology, we also do some other uh, project with the Singapore government. So for example, like uh, AR app, so at, uh, at that time maybe Pokemon Go is popular, it's 2017, I kind of forget already. Uh, so we, we, we make a uh, AR uh, game for the Army Open House 2017. And this is in, I think in one of the uh, sites in, in Singapore. And then uh, later on, we push this uh, uh, kind of AR, uh, the treasure hunting app to the whole Singapore. So we develop a national wide uh, applications for the national day parade in 2018. So maybe a very short video. So quickly some uh, like gaming apps to basically let people to go to different landmarks and then uh, collect some reward. Yep. And then uh, more recently, so we also work on some uh, augmented reality. Actually, this kind of related to uh, those uh, kinet gaming for retail. So we uh, work with our uh, Karens. Uh, yeah, I don't know if the guys know the, the Karens brand, maybe uh, the, the ladies will know better. Yeah, so these are uh, some games. There's, uh, it's basically put on the store and uh, basically it's try to hold on the customers get some uh, 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 stop by time. And then yeah, maybe I can just, maybe I can just show you, yeah. This in the Singapore mall. So basically some people will, will, will play the game, attract some crowd and then the the sales will, will, will come to you. So if you have uh, some score, then you get some souvenir, this kind of thing. Uh, so, okay. So yeah, those are the company uh, project. And I do want to show some of my latest research is way to uh, we call it semantics reconstruction. So I want to so do some previous work. So what we want to do is actually we need to uh, uh, mark yeah, your robotics thing. We can check a bit more. So uh, I think you all know the uh, iPad Pro or like the latest iPhone Pro, they have the LiDAR sensor. Basically it gives you uh, uh, basically the power to get the 3D environment easily. So you can get the geometry of the 3D environment. So you, you know the shape of the 3D environment. But what we want to do here is beyond getting the shape, we also want to know the type of the object. So basically when you keep scanning the 3D scene, uh, our method will try to update what you are, and tell the computer what you are actually seeing. So you know, okay, now you are seeing this piece of 3D uh, object is, uh, belongs to the class solver. So this will be useful for robots to do more uh, fine grain operation. For example, you want to grab something or hold up the chair, it's rather than the con uh, 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 the conventional, uh, like a bounding box approach to identify a big portion of the region. 
But here we want to have a more accurate uh, semantics information for the 3D scene. Okay, so uh, yeah, I think I quickly show some of my stuff here. Let me uh, end my sharing. How to end my sharing? I need to find the zoom button. Uh, wait. Okay, so let me see. Uh, Okay, yeah, I can find it. Yep. So yeah, I think we all uh, share. So what time is now? One thirty-five. Okay. So we have a couple minutes. We I, I actually want to like yeah. I have a couple questions when I'm hearing a answer Mark's presentation. I think one is a bit more related to perhaps technical. One is related to the to basically the the market stuff. And I want to uh maybe I ask hands first. Okay, uh, especially when, when Hans talk about the macro trend in, in, in your style, I think this is very important because you say you, you, you mentioned this, this or I you need to observe, uh, follow the macro trend and then start it. And then you show the chart, which is also very good. Like you show, okay, the prediction. Now, of course, with the pandemic is yeah, even more. But I do want to know, uh, so the, the chart you show, I think about 2019, right? But when you, when you start your company, like, back to 2011. I think you also need to have this kind of chart to convince yourself or convince your partner or even if you want to do a pitching, you need to convince some other people to, to, uh, to, to give you like resources. So how, how was the situation at that time? Like this chart? Oh, yeah, I would want to yeah, know better. Yeah, I think I, think, I mean at that point uh, that I, I would say that chart was still relevant but the data chart was not as Right. Mm. I mean, yeah, definitely we would know that uh, I think uh, 2011 was still really cash heavy, right? I mean, most mm -hmm. people didn't cash uh, and then we kind of know like it would be too online. Um, and uh, I mean, food delivery was still, I think Food Panda wasn't even well known at the time, right? Yeah, but but when you think about it, it really happened for, uh, it already happened for retail, right? It mm -hmm. go from like brick and mortar store to sort of like the online retail, uh, but the challenge was that in Hong Kong, uh, people would rather go down, uh, go downstairs to the store than like find stuff online, right? And that's why like there has been so many companies trying to do online shopping for the past twenty years, they all failed, right? Mm -hmm. uh, so so I think I think uh, I think one very important point is definitely in the end, I, I I do believe that no matter how much money a startup has, they cannot change the market. It's impossible to change the market. Right? Mm, mm, mm. Yeah, so it's very important to understand what will be the uh, sort of like the market environment. Um, and mm. uh, and I think COVID really changed everything, right? Mm. The new normal, uh, uh, where uh, like Zoom, for example, right? I mean, last year, I mean, I, I had to like fly to all the country really, sometimes really for like one meeting, you know? Mm. But now, like everything can be, you know, carry out online, right? So, I think I would say definitely COVID is opportunity because uh, uh, whenever uh, there is a big change in the environment, then it is an opportunity for startups, right? Uh, when everything stay normal, then the, the the large companies already sort of monopolize it already. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So, so I think I think it's good in Chinese term it's called sai pai, right? Like, <laughs> so, so that's a good thing, you know. That's mm -hmm. a that's a good thing. Yeah. Yep. Oh yeah. Very, very good. So yeah. And uh, yeah. For for Mark, yeah. I yeah. I enjoy your presentation. I see a lot of different robots. So I I like robots. Okay. I I. Uh, that's why we're in the electronics. Yeah. Very, very very interesting. And uh, I I think I saw some robots. I I think back a couple of years ago when I was uh, visiting maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe California. Some some more like the Westfield shopping mall. They have, they have the robot move around. But I always feel okay. Come on, those robots are just so simple. But then today I see your robots. I feel okay. This is actually the robot I want to see. Like these are the robots, not just move around. So I want to know in terms of the the, the a little bit maybe technical thing and also related to the to the to the maybe to the business. So um, so I see your robot is definitely maybe not as generic as those, so you may need to do some more customization on this. So in terms of like the business, like, would it worth 
by doing this or like doing that kind of more generic robot that put to many places? I, I just want to know a bit more. So actually, um, actually, because uh, we don't build traditional robots. Hmm. So the tra traditional robots is something like a chat boss and mm -hmm. uh, AGV walking around. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah, that, 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 that's the sort yeah, of that's that everybody's working on. But uh, yeah. however, uh, during, we, we call the evolution. The evolution mm -hmm. is something like a 5G uh, uh, network. It's mm -hmm. definitely uh, evolu an evolution. So during the evolutions, we create um, a new, uh, or maybe a not a new, or many opportunities that we come up with uh, the the, op, uh, the possibilities of building uh, new robots. So for example, if we are working on remote control robots, that uh, you, you see that the five G human robot this is a uh, fast uh, response latency, low latency robots that we have ever been created, and latency is around thirty milliseconds. So uh, during the four G uh, network communication, we could we could not do that. So for live streaming, so maybe um, you can see uh, some of my robots have a very uh, fancy, good, free uh, 160 degree cameras. So we don't have uh, such um, network we could, you know, have the, the bandwidth for the outdoor or even the mobility of robots. So mm -hmm. at that moment, so we, we, we need to do something we need to uh, cooperate with a teleoperator in order mm -hmm. to make the 5G development. So, and also because of the opportunities that 5G create. Mm -hmm. So we try to figure out the current pain point of the yeah. economies, like property management, like uh, the healthcare, like the smart living, like um, entertainment, like uh, like something like uh, education. So we try to build lots of robots. You can see that there are some robots. This robot is for uh, air quality. Air quality is related to um, property management. Something like a healthcare, like uh, the FIFA scan robots, some, some like um, UV disinfection, something like that. We try to create a, not only a robot, but a platform. Because uh, we know that uh, everybody if I would like to share some experience, working on a single product is, <laughs> is stupid. We need to create a, a platform which we could uh, have our own, you know, elements like the robot that we created, the self-oriented uh, robots, and as well as we could, you know, uh, embed different other robots into your platform to make a huge, you know, ecology ecosystem. That's this the thing that trying to do. Cool. So yeah, I, I just after like watching you two present, I, I just have an idea. I'm not sure if it's any ping pong or stupid. So can we have like a okay food ordering robot? So I see the screen like uh, uh hands back. So can I have the robot really maybe like a screen and okay Mark should do the robot hands you do the like the, and then okay is, is there any ping pong on that food? I don't think so. Oh, you're already doing <laughs> yeah, yeah I think sorry already... sorry out there. <laughs> okay. <laughs> uh, Okay. Uh, cool. Uh, wow. See that. Uh, so you are like making the next generation food ordering and delivering robots. Maybe. Maybe. So I go to LG7, I can just sit. I don't go to the display and then the display come to me. I, I think, uh, oh, the so display on the table, I, I don't know. That, yeah. I, I think that's the one that you would like to say. This is a huge screen robots that... Um, uh -huh. <laughs> that we were working on, the huge one. This is uh, something like a smart kiosk and uh, we have an auto guide vehicle inside. So we can go anywhere to uh, make some um, auto ticking. We we'll talk about that. This is very, very <laughs> cool. Right, of course, because uh, I, I saw the cooperation now. You got the smart kiosk, you got the like, like system, you got um, I don't know if uh, uh, object recognition and data sensing uh, functions and then we got a robotic platform. So I, I believe that we could have a very good job venture together. Okay, wow, cool. Okay, <laughs> I let, uh, I let <laughs> see. Yeah. This is not on trolls. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah I'm always look for opportunities. <laughs> yep. Yeah, okay. Very good. I let my hands talk offline for this. <laughs> <laughs> so I think now we are entering the like Q and A uh, session from the audience. I think this must have a lot of uh, questions want to want to ask. 
Uh, yeah. Let's see. Any anyone can just unmute yourself and uh, just just speak to the speaker. Just ask questions. Yeah. Any any anyone? Let's see. Yeah, from the students or alumni or colleagues. Please, we have one message. Good everyone. Yep. Yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And I'm sorry, like, because my connection here is very poor. So I'm not sure if anyone have talked about this because I just quit the meeting automatically due to the poor connection. And I'm currently a PhD, I'm currently a master's student in the USD. And uh, uh, I'm thinking, like, uh, what's your opinion toward this, like, a pandemic situation? Uh, like, uh, everything is seemed to be. Uh, disrupt and uh, every every situation seems to be a little bit uh, curious. So, um, do you have any suggestions for the student, uh, like how to improve or prepare themselves in this situation? Yeah, that's my question. Thank you so much. So maybe let me start the question. So. Um, uh, Normally, uh, we at the uh, epidemic on uh, the COVID-19 situation, we talk about new normal. So uh, the new normal comes with a huge opportunity, which is uh, during evolutions, during everything, there may be some good opportunities, we know that. But however, we need to identify what is a new normal. Mm. So because uh, somebody said, yeah, we are wearing marks, is a new normal, isn't it? I don't think so, because during after the COVID-19, nobody is going to wear masks. So if you are creating something like a, a mask, you know, you know, uh, 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 some patterns or some some some. Yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> so is that a sustainable business that we could do? So after that, uh, maybe uh, so for for a tele meeting, teleconferencing, that may be a new norm. Right? So for example, just like what we're trying to do, the touchless panel. That's new normal because nobody is willing to touch the panel, touch the yeah. button, touch the leg button. So that could be a new normal. Just like uh, after sauce, everybody is using a public chopstick instead of uh, your private chopstick to 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 during the Chinese food. So you really need to identify the new normal and make a creativity uh, using your mind uh, to to think of a, a, a new business model which would fit the new model, uh, the business model, the new normal. So this is my, uh, I don't know, I could not suggest many of us because uh, we, we're working on that every day. So, but uh, I saw many um, creativities, uh, ideas are working around, somebody is working on uh, some, some things, some, some, some warnings, some, 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 some testing, special, something, something like that, I don't know. So maybe some, somebody make a cool apps to, to show the, the details of uh, the, the input or uh, COVID-19 situation or whatever. But uh, I believe that there's uh, more opportunity than we could expect. Thanks. Any follow up? Like, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Uh, well, yeah. I think I think uh, I think Mark uh, as going back to what Mark said. Um, I think I think usually in any like like during the pandemic in this situation, usually I look at it is that uh, there are two phases. Right. One is like uh, you can definitely there's some short term opportunities. Right. You know, during this time, you can like take advantage of. And there's some like the new normal. When you say new normal, meaning that it's a longer term, right? It is a it's a change that like after two years down the road, uh, that that really like what the future is, right? I think that definitely a lot more vague is harder to predict. But I think just like any good entrepreneur, I mean, usually they're very observant of like kind of like they always have a picture of like what the future is, right? I mean, robotic definitely you know it's like one of the futures. Uh, so, so in the end, I think timing is very important. It's like how you, uh, it, yeah, it's very hard to say like this to give you an answer because I don't know what year you're in, whether you're going to graduate this year or next year. Or, I mean, the job market is definitely very complicated, right? Uh, so I think depending on like where you're going to enter the job market, your, your, uh, your, I mean, what you, what you have, 
how, how your edge is going to be different, right? But I was that my suggestion is definitely focus on the longer future, don't show, focus on the short term uh, opportunity. Yeah, because uh, I, I also saw a lot of businesses, for example, like during the COVID, they, they start like getting into businesses that really they can monetize it uh, for the short term. But by the time they get to the market, it's already changed already, right? Yeah, so so that that's just another yeah, other comment I have. Yeah, well, thank you, Mas. Yeah, I like the term new. Yeah, so now every day we are wearing masks. Yeah, so it'd be the mask business. Yeah, but, uh, so Derek, Mac, I think you have a question, right? Like you want to unmute and... Uh... Hi, thank you. Is yeah. Derek, do you hear me? You hear yeah, me yes. Yeah, thank you for the chance uh, for the question. So, um, uh, and also thank you for the time uh, for sharing uh, the inspiring technology and you know, also the company success. Right now, so uh, briefly introduce myself. Um, actually, I got my startup as well, uh, mainly focused on education, customization, and AI. Mm. That actually, at the same time, working in Uber and also Uber Eats, uh, working as a, a project management as well. So just now, uh, when we saw about uh, the food delivery services, that actually got in my heart that <laughs> very much about the food delivery. And at the same time, for the robot and also uh, the furniture uh, technology that um, is not really directly related to uh, what I'm doing right now about the AI and uh, education, but it's more like the same that uh, we are the setup, but um, uh, you guys already get a, a stable or a successful mm. future. So yeah, let's bring uh, to the question. So um, right now I, I'm doing the prototype with my co-founder and also my team that uh, we, are, we, we got many problems at, it, at this moment, not only for the product um, enhancement but also uh, for uh, the communication, for the fundraising, that to support the development of the project. So mm -hmm. I would like to seek uh, for your advice, um, you guys' advice. Um, when you are going to, uh, when you did your startup, you got many questions, many difficulties. So how do you, how would you guys um, get over the challenges? And um, and uh, where is the bottleneck? And after getting that critical uh, bottleneck, how can you sustain the business? That would be the question that I'd ask. Thank you. Uh, okay, let me let me try to take that. Uh, mm. I think I think in the end, like during the life cycle of a company or startup, uh, I mean, when I first started a company, right, I was like, okay, you know what? By the time I hit this milestone, I should be set already, right? But I can tell you that that they never come, right? <laughs> it's a it's an ongoing struggle, basically, yeah, like. True during different life cycle, you have different challenges, right? In the first few years is about uh, how you form a team, you know, find a good partner, uh, have a good team, sure. and go to market, and after you go to market, yeah. then you have like, a, you have the challenges from competitor, right? Uh, so, so I, but, but I think the most important, what I always believe is uh, you better to solve the internal problem first, uh, internal meaning that, uh, Definitely having a good founding team. Uh, I think I think there, there are many stories shared by successful entrepreneur. Is uh, uh, in the end, uh, it's a it's a people business, right? I mean, okay. even you have a good technology, but you still need people to like go to market, right? And yes. When you find investors, uh, investor, even when you find a good investor, investor sometimes have terms that are really like unfair to you, right? Sure, correct. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So I I would. I, I always prioritize internal issue first because internal is what I can control, right? Uh, and and after you get the internal issues off, uh, then then yeah, then the second you know focus on external. Yeah, that's that usually my approach to it. But it's a really broad question, so I'm sorry. I'm sorry if I didn't answer the question directly. Yeah. Yeah, I know. I'm sorry, but yeah, thank you. Thank you for. Thank you. So, uh, yeah, follow up a little bit. Yes, um, actually, there are two types of startups. Um, some, 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 some of that are hands and me is uh, business oriented. I believe that. So, where we make money by our business, but not from the VC. I believe that um, because uh, I, I don't have my VC yet, but we are working on the first one under uh, the A series right now. And um, actually, the, the other side is on countries. Uh, the, the R and D related, something like uh, the medical um, institute or medical company, 
they have zero income and they go IPO. <laughs> so yeah, that's, a, that's true. That's a totally different thing. So make sure that what is your uh, you know um, core competence. So um, focus on your business. I don't know because um, somebody is working on the platform, is burning money, is uh, like uh, the sharing bike. The some 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 platforms that that the, 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 the good Google win or even the partner they, they, they spread money on advertisement and uh, uh, to gain market shares. They they keep uh, fundraising in order to sustain it. Uh, I don't know what uh, what kind of uh, uh, business you're working on, but uh, I believe that if you would like to be sustained, to try to make a balance between the, the you need fundraising, of course, because um, you, you make your uh, business <laughs> development. Yeah, business development. You need money, and you need to have a certain R and D to support uh, your com- core competence. Because after two years, maybe you have your uh, perfect solutions. But after two years, maybe there are somebody superseding you. So that is a huge problem. So if you're asking me, what is the, 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 the bottleneck or the, the most difficult parts of uh, stressing my business is always money. So we really need to arrange uh, a very good arrangement in, uh, in your resources. You have the uh, manpower and how do you deal with projects. Uh, I really think you're an MBA student, you, you should know business. Yeah. BCG matrix, right? So you choose the <laughs> how and you try to implement everything uh, to to the question mark. <laughs> so, <laughs> you could do something like a building a star, just like what we have built. The 5G human robot, nobody would like to touch it because you spent lots of money. And but however, if once you set it, when, when you were successful on deploying this kind of robots, so there are more many uh, business opportunities coming through. And when you can see um, the, 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 pro- the robot that we are trying to deploy is uh, definitely yeah. the other robots that we are trying to build as uh, the brand equity. So, uh, so maybe I see if I can help you in this way. <laughs> okay, thank you. Thank you, really, really appreciate it. The great marks and hands fans for your you guys sharing very very valuable. I think yeah, yeah. I think we are always here to help. I think HKUST is a one big family. I think especially this alumni event. I when I was doing my PhD outside uh, Hong Kong, always uh, participate uh, different alumni events. Makes me feel I'm still connected with uh, my home, and that's probably the reason I come back HKUST. Mm-hmm. Uh, so I'm really happy uh, you guys joined this event. And I think, yeah, we pass the, the space to Donny. I think we have some wrap up. Okay, time flies quickly, uh, almost an hour now using uh, everyone's lunch hour. And happy to see happy everyone, to see everyone using your valuable your time in the day uh, away from your lunch, uh, uh, joining this alumni session, sharing session with, um, uh, is a joint effort uh, between different people, alumni, and also faculty members, and also our colleagues in, in different uh, uh, offices, the DAO, and also the SBM, and of course our center. So this type of uh, uh, partnership actually demonstrate the strong um, um, uh, partnership or, 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 or relationship between our HKHT members. As I, as a kid, uh, Professor Yuan said, it's an HKHT family, right? So. He has been with us for quite a long time and now after uh, studying, <laughs> returning back and, and also contributing. And now we have alumni, uh, Hans and Mark. Uh, you are two um, of a uh, uh, very uh, successful now uh, on drones, demonstrating your ability uh, using uh, the knowledge we learned from the HST. And hopefully all this will all, uh, 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 have a further potential for cooperation between each other. As you said uh, 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 earlier, Mark is now going to maybe explore policy with kids. Right? <laughs> Hopefully uh, this will become uh, another split that we can tell later. And uh, I, I have been uh, thinking of other possibilities. So maybe later on, I will also invite Hans and Mark uh, to, to uh, uh, partner with us, our center in further demonstrating and also promoting uh, entrepreneurship here, uh, here for our members. So sharp 
uh, sharply is two o'clock. And uh, thanks again. I I I saw some uh, of us are um, students or or alumni who may not be in Hong Kong, but are also joining this session. Really amazing. And um, it's the power of IT, right? So anyway, I hope everyone will enjoy this session and uh, feel free to come to any of us uh, for any advice or, or, or request for assistance. Even though uh, some of you are already graduated, but we are still uh, a family. So feel free to come back, uh, uh, request for anything that we may be able to offer. So uh, maybe Jerry and uh, Celia, do you have anything to add on? <laughs> because they are, they are very uh, helpful in collecting each other and then also uh, 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 helping to organize this event, uh, even though it's a partnership, but they have done a lot for us <laughs> in holding this event. So uh, again, welcome to send us anything, email, request, uh, uh, or, uh, or even offer. I already received a, an offer from uh, uh, one of you offering to be uh, our mentor in the mentor hub <laughs> already. So yeah, we are waiting for you to, to contribute back uh, to HPST. Okay, thank you very much and uh, stay good, stay healthy and uh, welcome back. <laughs>